one of the most common questions that I get asked is how do you do more damage as well as what are the best things to invest in for your gold? I spent hours doing research on this stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. And you already know. I made a spreadsheet, but I do want to make this one comment before we get into it is that I've actually bought a new microphone. So let me know down in the comments below whether you like this microphone better or the one that I'll be talking into for the remaining parts of the video. As you can see, there's a lot of different things on here with percentage differences than actual damage numbers of the skill that I used. You can read through this on your own. As you can see, it just kind of goes from one step to the next. But more important than anything is not the damage number, but it's the percentage that it was able to add onto your build. That is the big picture here and what we're actually gonna be extrapolating from this data on what you should spend your gold on. Now, what we're gonna be talking about here today is moving from 1580 to 1620, which is of course, the latest content in the game. So that's what we're primarily focusing on here. If you are not 1580 yet, feel free to go ahead and watch this video, but make sure and go watch my previous video of everything you should be focusing on until you hit 1580 to spend your gold on. How I gathered this data was I went into Trixian for the most part of it until we got to the port where I needed a support, which my support was a 1623-ish with a 21 weapon. And I only use one skill, Red Dragon Horn. And of course, there's always a little bit of variance in percentage because your damage isn't always the exact same, right? Even when you crit or don't crit, the damage number for a certain skill is going to vary a little bit, and that's okay, right? It's not gonna vary 15%. It's gonna vary a couple percent at the most. Now, the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this portion right here of your support is that your support's AP buff is actually affected by their base attack power, which is their weapon power, plus intelligence, which means the higher weapon power intelligence, the higher the buffs on their AP skills. So this is why it's such a massive damage buff and 32% for this particular Bard's AP buffs, which is absolutely bananas. And this means the higher eye level you go, the higher eye level your support is, the more responsible for your damage that they are. So be nice to your supports. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of this chart. The biggest damage percentages that you're gonna get are from a proper build, a proper set, pretty rudimentary, level five tripods, again, pretty rudimentary, and an S tier support. This is 62% at around 1620, and some things to consider, right? That's TTC. Yearning and brand at 100%. This is pretty standard. This should be around there every fight. AP buff at 80%, and a three bar buff from bar at around 30%. Now this results in 62% extra damage per player, guys. That is 180 plus percent for that party. Now, do you see where having a good support can make a complete difference in a fight, in a raid, in anything? This is why it is so important to make friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, you're gonna wanna subscribe because the video I'm also working on is, you guessed it, how to make friends in Lost Ark. And more importantly, how to make support friends in Lost Ark. You know you want them and you know you need them. So make sure to subscribe to the channel because that's gonna be an interesting video. You're not gonna wanna miss it. Now, aside from that, what you actually have control over, I checked marked on the green what's really worth it, what you should be focusing on. This is why it says primary, okay? Secondary, these are the yellow check marks. Red is tertiary. This means if you have nothing else to level up, nothing else to upgrade, this is one of the last things that you're gonna be looking to upgrade. 19 weapon. You're definitely gonna to wanna to get there. It is 100% worth it, but after you get to 19, park it. Park it, man. Okay, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to focus on is gems and elixirs. Elixirs are insanely powerful. Even on my Slayer, which is 1610, she only has purple elixirs. Even then, without getting a 35 set or a 40 set, obviously, which I do know some people that got 35 set from purple elixirs, which is pretty wild. I am definitely not as fortunate or as lucky or however you want to look at it, uh, blessed even to have had that happen to my Slayer, but that's okay. My damage has still gone up about five or 6% just from rolling 
strength or weapon power, attack power, like boss damage on my pants or whatever piece that's on. I can't remember, but rolling those still and trying to get threes or fours on those stats are very good. And it's going to boost your damage for very cheap. And then once you get to 1620, you can start rolling a legendary elixirs. Typically, we're looking at around 300k or so ish this is what i've heard from many people and just kind of going based on my experience i'm almost at 40 set and i can't remember if it's like six or seven weeks now or something like that and i definitely haven't spent anywhere even close to 300k probably more like 100 to 130 ish so far i know it will actually get more expensive though as the pieces aren't worth as much when you sell them. But if we take this on average, you're gonna be getting around 15% extra damage and that's not best in slot everything. That's just having the proper 40 set plus some average rolls on everything else. Uh, and that's about 20,000 gold per 1% damage. Okay, that is actually extremely good. And if we're looking at level nines, I take four level nine damage and four level nine cooldowns most classes have three or four or maybe five top damage skills that make up the greater 70 to 80 percent of their damage so that's why i use the number four here for four level nine damage gems and four level nine cooldown gems now also this is going to be very class specific because some classes it's an absolute no diff on your cooldown you could just have level sevens and it's completely fine or you might need to level 10 on something else that's you know not even related to your actual damage each class is a little bit different so make sure and test this out for yourself but for me i got about 15 extra percent damage going from level sevens to level nines in this fashion it took about 900k which is about 60,000 gold per 1%. Now, some things to consider. Here we go. TTC. You can trade, re-roll, and resell these as you need. It is quite literally an investment, especially if you're buying them at around where they average. Right now, I would say gems are a little bit more expensive than they usually are. That's why I'm still holding off to this day to buy my level 10 gems that I'm looking for and a couple level nines as well. But it really just depends on how hungry you are to be doing more damage, whether you wanna wait for those to go down a little bit or buy them now. It's of course completely your decision, but right now on these prices, it's about 900K. I wanted to make this quick note about cards. You have card sets and also as you awaken cards, you get a certain percentage damage dealt towards a certain type of enemy, like it might be demons or humanoids or plants or beasts or whatever it is. Unanimously, the best one you need to level up is damage versus demons because most of the Legion commanders are demons. So you do a, a lot more damage against the Legion commanders, which is usually the hardest content in the game. That is also something that you will just focus on over time. It is a very long game. It's hard to rush this, but you do need to focus on it. Make sure you're getting card XP when you can, run your cubes, do your chaos gates, all of those types of things, do your chaos dungeons, everything so you can get as many card xp packs as you can buy the card xp from the sailing merchant each week all that good stuff but past that we're looking at plus 20 plus 21 plus 22 plus 23 weapon these are still within reason okay 24 and 25 is where it just gets absolutely ridiculous because 24 250k and this is on average but if it doesn't go on average it becomes very very punishing. So 245k for 1% of damage, you are spending about 150k or 130k per 1% with the 24 weapon on average. Okay. And on plus 25, it, it's about the same. You're but you're heavily time gated on this because this is taking into account that you're using all bound mats, even the solars. And most people don't want to wait that long to do that. So they're going to be buying the materials so it becomes even more inefficient. So this is why I say you really want to focus on all these other things first. And if we're really going to talk about stones and bracelets, they are just too RNG. You just don't know what you're going to get. You just have to parade, you guys. And make sure and look at all of your bracelets before you dismantle them when you get them from raids, abyssal dungeons, etc., that way you're not throwing away any chances that you might have to get 
that one bracelet that you need. Typically, you're gonna be looking for around a 10% bracelet. This means whenever you slap this bracelet on compared to nothing, you are gonna gain about 10% extra damage. This is typically gonna be achieved with a good roll on your main stat, a pretty good or average roll on your sub stat, and then one to two damage lines. And like I said, my particular bracelet that I got, it has my main stat on there, which is a pretty good roll on my main stat, 106. I would love it if it was higher, but it's 106 plus three damage lines. So when I put that bad boy on there, it's anywhere between 13 to 15% from what I've seen. That is just a weird luck that I got. You woohoo for me. But guys, you don't need that. Just aim for something that's around 10% or so. That's a really solid bracelet. That is 10% damage just from a bracelet. It's crazy. It's very good. Don't even think about going for a 9-7 stone. That's why I literally put bruh here. Like, bruh, don't do this, okay? It's a waste of gold. It's such a waste of gold. And it's so RNG. It's wild. And it's a waste of payouts, man. Don't do it. Please, please don't do it, okay? Focus on this stuff first. Once you've got all this, once you've got your 25 weapon, once you've got your actual level 10 gems, you don't even need level 9s. Once you get your 10s, once you get your 40 set elixir, once you get your 10 plus percent bracelet, then you can worry about getting a 9 7 stone, okay? Then you can worry about that when you've got accomplished everything else. If you're at a point where you've got your level 9 gems, you've got your 20, 21, 22, 23 weapon, whatever it may be, and you're looking at getting your level 10 gems you've likely already got good elixirs you've got good bracelets you've you know you've already had those things and you're looking to absolute min max and that is when you buy your level 10 gems when you're looking to min max you're going into the hardest content and you've accomplished all these primary things that you really need to be focusing on spending your gold on to get but guys that is everything for this video like i said we're going to be making a video on how to make friends in lost ark especially support friends and i can tell you with 100 experience when you have friends to play with regularly in this game, it is a completely different experience and an experience that I want everyone to have because this game is so much better when you play with people. It is an MMO after all, so that would make sense. Make sure and subscribe to the channel if you like Lost Ark content and make sure and check me out on Twitch every Sunday. If, if you are watching this video on Sunday, click the link in the description below. Come follow me on Twitch, come hang out say hi but guys seriously that is everything for this video i hope y'all have an absolutely fantastic day and i will see you on the next one you're not going to want to miss it